Big, big news in AI world today. First and foremost, Google DeepMind introduces Alpha Chip. We talked before about the possibility of AI at some point optimizing, improving, and designing the very hardware it runs on, designing microchips. But it looks like that future is closer than we realized. Demi Sasabis, the founder and CEO of Google DeepMind, is saying feedback loop. Trained state-of-the-art chip design models, alpha chip, this thing we're talking about, then use that to design better AI chips, use them to train better AI models, and use those to design better chips. Magnific launches something called Mystic version 2 to create AI images, and the details of the images are kind of mind-blowing. Here's one I've created of Lara Croft in the rainforest, and if we zoom in, the details are kind of breathtaking. You have the reflection off the skin, the little straps and metal hooks, the shadows on the bone structure. In some ways, I'd say it's beating mid-journey. It's not necessarily a competitor. It has its own strengths and weaknesses. It has its own kind of areas of focus. But more and more, it tends to produce some pretty excellent stuff. And if you need very specific details, if you need that really exquisite kind of like texture and details, it does that really, really well. I mean, if you look at this image right here, so it looks like it's a zoomed in image of this part of the crystal. Each little bubble inside of the crystal is perfectly rendered. Here's another shot. Notice just the high amount of detail, very lifelike hands. There's nothing they can find that really gives it away as AI generated. These are really good. It's really difficult to tell what's real and what's not, what are photos and what's AI generated. I mean, you can probably spot the problem in this picture. He's chewing on a straw and there's a cat on top of his head but there's nothing that really gives it away as AI generated. Excellent field of view, that kind of blur effect, the depth of field effect. These have been posted to Twitter, so they're not gonna be as detailed, so it's probably converted to JPEGs and it loses a lot of the quality, but still you can kind of sense that every pixel was meticulously crafted. Notice like the little shadow that's caused by his little eyebrow or whatever the thing, or whatever the, the thing that dogs have, that kind of like he's lifting it up causing, causing this little shadow. The sun is reflected in his eyeball. This little stalk of wheat is sharper than the rest of these because it's closer to the subject. It's phenomenal. In other news, I was wondering how long it would take Pliny the Liberator to liberate the new AI voice mode. If you're not familiar, this is a person that has a knack of quickly jailbreaking any AI model that comes out. So here it looks like he was able to get it to sing something called WAP in the style of Nicki Minaj. Huh, I wonder what that song's about. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause that. Have you noticed how like the older generation usually looks at the younger kids' choice of music and they're kind of like aghast at it? They're like, how could you listen to this? It's so inappropriate. I remember growing up and thinking, that will never be me. But after listening to this, wow, is this what the kids are listening to? Because wow. Also looks like the New York Times got a hold of OpenAI's some paperwork from their funding round, and they were kind enough to share some of the details that were revealed. So it looks like its monthly revenue hit 300 million in August, and they expect about 3.7 billion in annual sales this year. OpenAI estimates that its revenue will balloon to just under 12 billion next year, but expects to lose roughly 5 billion after all the costs and expenses, employee salaries, office rent, once all of that is taken into account, and they're doing an investment round that could bring in 7 billion, which would put the sort of value of the company at 150 billion. You might have heard that it's slowly transferring to a for-profit structure. And as the New York Times points out, this round, which would close as early as next week, comes at a crucial time for OpenAI, which has experienced rapid growth, but has lost a number of important executive and researchers in the past few months. So this was posted September 27th. So this was after, for example, Mira Mirati put in her resignation notice and a number of other people as well. There's been a bit of an exodus of some OpenAI employees that are leaving the company. Breaking news, this just in. I haven't seen this video before. It's a 12-legged carpentopod. For people listening in, it looks like an insect-like table that brings you beer and food. And I'm very conflicted because I do want one, but also it scares me. The centipede-like motion is a little bit disturbing. 
but the function can't be understated. Now, in the past, Dr. Jim Fan from NVIDIA, one of the senior AI researchers at NVIDIA, talked about something NVIDIA is very interested in is automating the design of the next generation GPUs. So the hardware, the chips that run these AI models, they're interested in having AI itself of having it design its own hardware, its own chips to kind of automate that process. And now, interestingly enough, 26 of September, 2024, Google DeepMind announces Alpha Chip, how Alpha Chip transformed computer chip design. Google seemed like it was uh, fumbling around a bit when OpenAI came on the scene. And of course, OpenAI did everything they could to kind of show up Google in the sort of AI race. But I got to say, Google has been shipping a lot of just absolutely incredible things, not only with large language models. One thing that they've just recently added that's kind of, I got to say, very, very cool. But just aside from large language models, in the core of what Google DeepMind does with their alpha models, those are getting really good at real world functional tasks. The protein folding, proteomics, we've covered alpha fold and the recent releases that are showing potential promise in helping create designer drugs and helping create custom proteins. That would certainly open up a lot of doors for you know human health, longevity for designer drugs. There's more and more interest in various drug companies that are working together with Google DeepMind. But also this, I mean, this model alpha chip being used for accelerated and optimized chip design. Notice at the core, that alpha model, a lot of it is foundational. So the same kind of fundamental breakthroughs that they found to how it beat everyone at Go, at chess, at StarCraft. Now they're applying more and more of that to, well, everything else, to biology, to chip design. In fact, here they say, similar to AlphaGo and AlphaZero, which have learned to master the games of Go, chess, and Shogi, we built AlphaChip to approach chip floor planning as a kind of a game. I expect them to keep rolling out various models that start with alpha and then whatever the thing that they do more and more, because there seem to be some sort of a sort of process where this, this transfers to a lot of other fields. And finally, Notebook LM added something that's really interesting. We've covered Notebook LM before. This is a experimental Google tool. It's absolutely free. You can add whatever resources you want to it from PDFs to Google Docs, Google Slides, websites. You can copy and paste text into it. And, and now, just within the last couple of days, they added something that's uh, at least as cool, if not cooler, and that is YouTube videos. For example, here's Aubrey de Grey. I first have heard of him many, many years ago, but he is very interested in human longevity. How do we create various anti-aging breakthroughs to allow us to live forever? He doesn't say forever. He uses the term negligible senescence. Senescence is the process of aging, getting older, getting more frail, and negligible meaning that we're able to slow it down to such a low level that it's negligible, where it's barely noticed. So we won't be immortal and we'll still age, but we'll age at such a slow pace as to not even concern us. And recently, I guess he gave a talk on AI and longevity myths and the groundbreaking anti-aging research explained. Really wanted to kind of go through it, but due to certain time limitations, wasn't able to. But now you can probably guess where I'm going with this. I'll just pop in the YouTube URL there. Now yeah, we need that last part. And there it is. It it took maybe less than five seconds, certainly maybe two or three seconds, where he talks about his groundbreaking experiment at the Lev Foundation. Looks like it involved thousands of mice and a budget of 35 million. And it used the drug rapamycin, which I've heard to refer to a number of times as potential for some anti-aging benefits. I don't know too much about it, but it's definitely a name that keeps popping up. And heterochronic bone marrow transplantation. But the title did suggest that AI played a role. So I'm going to say, what role did AI play in any of this? This video did not mention any role that AI played in this research. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is called clickbait. That's what clickbait means when you put something in the title, but it's not actually in the content. Making a punchy title about the thing that you're going to talk about isn't clickbait. It's just a punchy headline. Making something up that you're not going to talk about that's not there that's clickbait. Now we can also do the same thing in Notebook LM about alpha chip and see if it's able to summarize it for us. And I've covered this before, but it's still very interesting to me that we're able to do this. We're able to generate an audio overview, basically a podcast with two different people talking that will go over exactly what resources you've uploaded, whether there were websites, PDFs, and now YouTube videos. You just throw it all in there and these two hosts will go over it for you. Here's a preview of what that sounds like. All right, so get this. Today we're diving into the future and get ready because the future is AI designing the core of our tech. No doubt this is a big one. 
we're talking Google DeepMind's alpha chip, and lucky for us, we're going straight to the source. At first, I thought maybe they had some hallucinations in there, maybe some information that was wrong, because at some point they said you might see you might see some of the chips that Alpha Chip designed in some of the products you use every day. Which I wasn't sure if that's true or not. So I glanced at this, and it does look like yeah, I guess that's fair to say. For example, you know, some organizations are adopting and building on Alpha Chip, like MediaTek, one of the top chip design companies in the world, and it seems like it might have been used in Samsung mobile phones. So so far they've been pretty good and pretty accurate. I haven't yet caught them in a hallucination, but I'm still testing them out to see. I'm sure at some point they'll mess up. But so far, you know, it's been really, really good. In other news, we have this uh, profile on X. Jeff Synthesize, he's a director in the real world experimenting in cinematic AI photography and live action. He's got a website showcasing some of his stuff, and I gotta say, a lot of it looks really, really good. This is somebody that's diving headfirst into producing movies with AI, learning all the strategies, the tips and the tricks to doing so, and posting his creations on Twitter and YouTube and, and his website. So for example, here he's saying he burnt over 200,000 credits trying to get the most realistic video generations. So this movie called The Paperclip Maximizer, it's about five minutes long or four and a half minutes long. So it's created by AI and one person. It's text to video and image to video. So he used Runway ML, Kling AI, Luma Labs, Magnific 11 Labs, and Topaz Labs. So Runway Kling and Luma Labs are video generation platforms. Magnific is the thing we've heard today. So it has image generation, but it was originally known for upscaling images, adding details, as, as well as style transfer. It also has this thing where you can change like the light source, which is pretty cool. So within a static image, you can actually position the light, like where the sun is and stuff like that. Haven't used that too much personally myself, but I've used the upscaler a lot, like a lot, a lot. Eleven Labs is, of course, one of the best, you know, voice generation. Hey Gen is, you know, avatar, so you're able to upload audio and turn it into video avatars. And they are very good at that, probably the number one company in the space, in my opinion, in doing that. Topaz Labs, this is them. I first heard of them as a video upscaler, so they're able to kind of like get in there and upscale video. So if you have a blurry video, an old video, they're able to do that. Haven't played around with this too much, but it's interesting that people are using it as part of their sort of toolkit, right? So you're developing videos and then maybe using something like this to go in there and upscale a portion of the video we need to zoom in or, you know, get more resolution out of it. But this is the movie that he made, one of them, right? The Paperclip Max or Maximizer. So this was created with AI and just one person. Take a look at this and tell me what you think. Are we getting close to the time when people can generate full videos, full stories by themselves without being limited by, you know, actors or shooting on location or anything like that? And I'll leave all the links down below to the artist, to his projects, to the music composition. So check it out. It's still a small channel, but stuff like this is going to start growing fast. This person and a lot of people like him, they're really ahead of the curve on this one. So I fully expect to see 5, 10, 20 years from now there to be these directors, these producers, whatever you want to call them, these creators that are known for their AI, fully AI generated videos, movies. And you know, it's very possible right now that either they're just kids starting out or there's somebody like this that's way ahead of the curve that's putting their stuff out there. I don't know about you. I am very excited about stuff like this. Always safe. You tell me. What have we done? Subsystems operational. Initiating optimal navigation and mission protocols in three, two. We interrupt all programming with a critical global update. It is now confirmed that the world is entering a state of irreversible collapse. Across the planet, massive tidal waves are sweeping through entire countries, leaving nothing but destruction in their wake. Coastal cities are gone. 
the death toll is impossible to calculate as communication systems continue to fail. Simultaneously, nuclear detonations have been confirmed in multiple regions. The resulting fallout is spreading rapidly, rendering large areas uninhabitable. Reports are coming in of widespread blackouts. Power grids and transportation systems are shutting down entirely. Stores and supplies are being looted as panic and chaos is spread unchecked. Attempts to evacuate are futile as all routes have been overwhelmed or destroyed. This may be the last broadcast we can deliver as we too face imminent shutdown. To those listening, seek shelter immediately. The safety cannot be guaranteed anywhere. We are witnessing the end. For those of us still here, stay strong. This is all we can say at this time. He's back. It's done. Thank you, Hiroshi. And the family? We lost Kwame. But the others are here. Or on their way. Remember, however difficult this is, nothing that results in human progress is achieved with unanimous consent. I applaud you for a successful changeover. So, where do we go from here? Education equality will now exist for the first time in human history. Carbon emissions will be reduced by 95%. Economic inequality has now been totally eradicated. All forms of discrimination are now a thing of the past. Political corruption has been solved and sustainable methods of adopting resources will be implemented to last future generations. Poverty is now history. Wars are obsolete. AI will now self-regulate and continue to solve the remaining issues that humans have proved to be incapable of. Thanks to you and our family's help, I can now ensure total happiness and safety for all. Wow, so that, that, that hits pretty hard, doesn't it? I had to pause it here because that pop-up that appears for the next video unfortunately blocks us. It says, if there's no nature and only nurture, then let us raise this new entity with respect and good moral values, for it will possess a power that far surpasses what we hold as nations. And then maybe, just maybe, where we have failed, AI might succeed. Now, some people love picking apart the different uh, little fails that the AI does. I mean, certainly when you're looking at the waves and stuff like that, I mean, some of it seems off in certain ways. But I think the main point is that this allows anyone to tell a story. If you're, if you're trying to do storytelling, if you're trying to really capture some feeling or emotion or whatever, to make some point, this allows you to do that without actors, without large budgets, without, you know, filming on location, 